Hello and welcome to this training session on data stage. In today's session, we are going to take a look at the unstructured data file stage. Now this stage can write to a Microsoft Excel file. Unlike the sequential file stage, that can only write to flat files. So these flat files can be like the .csv files, .dat files, .txt files, etc. But it cannot write to a Microsoft Excel file. And the limitation is because a Microsoft Excel file or workbook might contain of multiple worksheets. So we need the ability to write to those multiple worksheets in the Microsoft Excel workbook. So that's why we have this stage called the unstructured data file stage. So in today's session, we are going to take a look at some of the examples using this stage. And we are going to start with taking a look at a simple job that writes to a Microsoft Excel workbook. So we have one source of data writes to one sheet in a Microsoft Excel workbook. And then next, we are going to take a look at a job that is able to write from the multiple sources of data to the multiple worksheets in a single Microsoft Excel workbook. So let's begin. So you can find the stage under the file category, under the palette, and the stage is called the unstructured data stage. So for this example, we have some source data, which is employee data, and it is in the form of a flat file or the .txt file. So we are going to use the sequential file stage for this data. And you can double click on this stage and we can see the properties of the sequential file state. So we already know how to configure a sequential file state. Just give the file name and the file path over here, define the columns over here, and then you can view data just to take, a, just to get an, uh, an idea of the data in this file. So you can see that there's employee number, first name, last name, hire date, band, department ID, and all these columns and all these data that we have in this file. So this is going to be a source data, and we are going to write this data to one of the worksheets in a Microsoft Excel workbook. So we have this stage, sequential file stage configured for a source data. The next stage that we need in this job to write to a Microsoft Excel workbook is the unstructured data stage. So just drag and drop it to your job canvas and connect it to the output link coming from the sequential file stage. So once that is done, just double click on the stage and we would enter the stage editor box you can see that there's document type and the option in that is only Excel. So you have a drop down which has the Excel option. So you can choose that option. Then you can go to the right mode and there are different options. Create a file, modify an existing file, create a file if you want to create a new file, modify an existing file if you already have a file and you want to update that file, then you can choose that option. So for our scenario, we are going to use create a file. Then go to the input tab and you'll see that there are various tabs over here. The link ordering one is the important one. Advanced, buffering mode, partitioning, they're similar to for the stage editors for the other stages. And then next is the columns. So if you click on columns, you'll see that all the columns from the sequential file stage are mentioned here. So whatever was there in your input link, the sequential employee link, all those columns are over here. So the next step you need to do is click on this configure tab. Once you click on the configure tab, this is a dialog box that would open up and you need to set the properties for the stage over here. So output file, write method, you have different options over here, specific file, generate multiple files or parameterize. So similar options to the sequential file stage, generate multiple files if you want to then write to multiple Microsoft Excel workbooks. Parameterize, you can uh, define a parameter called the file name and instead of hard coding the file name over here, you can choose that option as well. So these are the different options that you will get. For our case, we are going to choose the specific file option because we are just going to write to a single file. Then the next text that you need to enter is the file name. So you can just type your file name. So the file path where you want the file to be. So this is going to be our path. And the file name so just give any name and the extension you can give as excel is for the excel file then the file update mode you want it to override or create a er given error if it exists so similar options as we had for the sequential file stage we are going to use override then in the properties set for all links. 
So this is useful when we are writing to multiple worksheets in a Microsoft Excel workbook. So this will be useful in our second example that we are going to take a look at. So we will leave it checked for now. Then you can see that their property is called the column header and adjust column width. So column header, the value of column names. So whatever are the column names that will be displayed as a column header and the worksheet that would be created within the Microsoft workbook. So you have different options. You can choose none as well and you can choose parameterize as well. So for us, we are going to uh, choose the column names. Then moving on to the next property, adjust column width. You have two options, no and yes or parameterize. So we are going to choose yes and this is basically that it would auto adjust the column width according to the length, the maximum length of the data in that particular column. So as we do by double clicking on that um, column in Microsoft Excel, so this would auto adjust it. This would do it automatically. So we are going to choose yes for that. Then you can see that the link name and the sheet name are displayed here. So the sheet name, actually you can type the sheet name, whatever is the sheet name that you want. You can type it over here. The link name is the link that you gave in your data sage job for this particular link. This is the source link that is coming. If you click on OK, you will come back to the screen. Just say OK over here. And now our job is completed. So the next step is to save the job and compile the job. The job has been successfully compiled. And now we are going to execute this job. So you can see that the 15 records from the input have been written to a Microsoft Excel work. And if you take a look at the data, this is what you'll be able to see. So you have the employee name, first name, last name, hire date, band, department ID, all these options as you had in your source file. So all the data has been written to the Microsoft Excel workbook. Now moving on to the next example, we already have a sequential employee file. So now we have another source of data and this is the department data. So just click on the sequential file stage and you'll see that it has been configured for the department data. So department.txt is a file. These are the columns in the file and you can just do a view data to get an idea of the data. So this is the, uh, our data in the file. You have department ID, department name, different department IDs and their corresponding names. So this is our second source of data for this job. So what we are going to do next is connect the source of data to the unstructured data file stage as well. So just connect the output link from the sequential file to the unstructured data file stage. So you can see that the unstructured data file stage can take multiple inputs. So this is because you can write to multiple worksheets in this workbook. So click on this stage, go back, choose all those options under the input tab. The columns are defined for the different lengths. So for your first source of data, which was sequential employee, you can see that all the date, all the columns from that for input link are over here. And then you can choose the second source of data, which was department. And you can see that the columns are over here from that department input link. Now go to the link ordering tab. And if you click on the link ordering tab, you can see that there are two links defined and they have this order, employee and department. So this is the order in which they would appear in your Microsoft Excel workbook. So you can change the order as well. You can move employee down, you can move department up, do whatever you want. So it depends on in which order you want the sheets to appear in your Microsoft workbook. So with the current order, employee worksheet would be the first worksheet and the second worksheet would be the department. So next step, click on the configure button, go to this dialog box. You can give the employee uh, your file name. So all the options are going to be the same as we had for our earlier example. And now this set for all links. So if you choose that option, what is going to happen is if you uncheck it, let's see, you will see that there are two different links which you can choose from and you can choose these two properties, column header and adjust column width separately for all those links. But if you choose that option set for all links, then they're automatically set the same way for both the worksheets or both the input links. Next is your sheet order. This, will, this is the order in which your sheets would appear in the workbook. You can type the name in whatever way you want. 
employee name, department name. So these would be your worksheet names as they would appear. So you can type the worksheet names. If you want the first worksheet to be called employee, you want the second worksheet to be called department, you can write, you can choose any name that is relevant for your uh, business requirement. So you can name them accordingly and change the sheet order from here. You can select move down or move up, whatever you want. So move down, so employee would become the second worksheet, move it up, so it would become the first worksheet and so on. So all these changes you can make over here. Then just click on the OK button. You will come back to this dialog box and click OK. And now a job is completed. So the next step is obviously to compile the job, successfully compiled, and then execute the job. So now it has finished successfully. 15 records from the first input link and six records from the second input link. So now let's go and take a look at the workbook that has been created for us. So you can see now that there is this employee data over here and there's another tab called department as well. So this is your employee data, all the 15, 16 records and the department data, all the six records from the department file. So multiple worksheets have been created and this is the way you can write to a Microsoft Excel workbook having multiple worksheets. So this is all for this session today. Uh, I hope that you like this session and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. Thanks a lot for watching this session. Have a good day and goodbye.